Hello again and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Josh McEachran who has just signed a two year deal with Blues. We've got a few things to talk about. I'm going to be looking at his stats and like analysing that a little bit. I've been talking to a Brentford fan called Billy the Bee who's got a load of in-depth opinions on him as well. So that'll be good to take a look at. And also we're going to be looking at how he's going to slot into this Blues side. That's all coming up next but before we get into it I just want to say a big shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. Go and check them out if you haven't already. The link is down in the description. They've got everything you need from scores, fixtures, news, social stuff. It's all in one place and it is the best football app on the market. The reviews don't lie. Go and check it out. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. But let's get into it then. Josh McEachran. So obviously the guy was touted as like this wonder kid when he was at Chelsea. Um, they all had a lot to say about him. I actually remember um, when he first came on for Chelsea, he made his debut. I'm pretty sure I watched the game on Sky. Uh, don't remember anything about the game. I just remember him coming on and being like, oh, this is the next big thing or whatever. Uh, obviously the guy has scored one goal in his professional career. Who was it against, do you reckon? Who was it against? Obviously it was Blues because that's just typical Blues, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, so I, I, I remember. I think I was there. I think he was at Brentford's ground when he scored that goal. Um, but yeah, he had four years with Brentford, and Billy has a lot to say about him. I think it could be a really good signing for Blues. So he had an interview with Blues today, and he actually said that Harley Dean recommended him to uh, to Dong or to someone at Blues, and that's the reason he came for a trial. And then ten days later. He is a Blues player. He signed a two-year contract, uh, and it's quite exciting because, considering the transfer window's done and everything, it, it's, it's a player that could actually make a difference in this Blues team. And I'm trying to think, you know, we need more players that are capable of, uh, uh, you know, of passing the ball about and, and getting this philosophy um, played on the pitch because we always seem like we're stuck in two minds. Like we've got some players that want to play the game, that they want to play the way that. Um, Dong and Pep want us to play and then we've got others that struggle a bit more with it you know we've been looking at away games as well and we, we, we seem to lose that midfield battle and uh, and struggle at times and I think maybe this could be a player that, that will help us with that I don't know how effective he's going to be obviously he's lacking match, match sharpness he even said himself he's probably going to need some time in the under 23s maybe a week or two before he's going to be playing uh, anywhere near 90 minutes so we're going to have to see about that but I'm fairly excited about it and um when we were linked with players over the summer, there was a Twitter account that I went on to, to check out the stats of a player, and it's called Blues Breakdown. So if you're not following them on Twitter, make sure you do right now. It's at Blues Breakdown, a really good Twitter account. So let's have a look at his breakdown from the summer. So Blues Breakdown say uh, the central midfielder often dictates play from a deep central position. His passing is immaculate, completing 88% accurate passes last season. His 12.5 passes to the final third per 90 was the fourth highest of any player in the championship last season. He was also in the top 20 for progressive passes per 90 with a 61% winning rate for defensive duels. Uh, McEachran is also highly effective in his defensive duties. Now, uh, we're going to have to have a look at what Billy said as well because Billy's been watching him play for four years pretty much. Sometimes he can be a little bit frustrating. We're going to go and get into that. Uh, so, so yeah, we'll have, we'll have a little look. But that's what his stats say. But stats don't often dictate how good a player is going to play and especially for like a different sort of team so it's whether he can actually fit into blue style of play i think he did struggle a little bit at brentford um he, they had really high hopes of him when he went in but let's take a look at what billy had to say um because it is quite interesting he's given me a really really um in-depth <laughs> sort of analysis of him from what he's seen so if anything while you're watching this video go and uh, go and check out billy the bees channel his links will be in the top comment go and check it out he joined in summer 2015 just after Brentford had got to the playoff semi-final. Mark Warburton had just left and Brentford had just hired a new head coach from Holland. So Josh McEachran was around a dozen players signed that summer as Brentford tried to overcome a squad overhaul that had seen players like Andre Gray, Stuart Dallas and Moses Odebejo, I've probably butchered that, uh, leave the club that summer. So we, we've seen what it's like having um, a complete player overhaul. We're in the middle of one now. Doesn't always work amazingly, does it? So he said Josh was the first player to be signed after the head coach was hired. He said, we actually met the head coach who was so excited about working with McEachran. He'd played for Vitesse the previous season and was well known to him. He said he was a brilliant player, basically. He said when he first joined, he, he, he struggled a fair bit with the injury. He didn't properly get playing until December 2015. So he was playing in the midfield with Ryan Woods, John Swift, Nico Yanaris, and Alan Judge. 
So the Brentford fans are saying that he um, always seemed to be out injured. He never got a solid run, which might be a factor in why he didn't really kick on with them. Obviously, he had four seasons with them, but he's even said here, I'm guessing a lot of his appearances in 2016-17 and 17-18 were subs appearances. So last season, he had his first full pre-season, the full training and everything, which again, he hasn't really had this season. Uh, not due to injury, due to not having a club. Ryan Woods was not playing as he was rumoured to be leaving for Swansea, so John McEachern had to step up. The bosses were confident he was going to be the man to run the midfield. So he seemed to look really good at the start. He was making incisive passes. They looked great. And it turns out they went and played Aston Villa, and that's when they actually sort of got found out. And teams sort of knew how to play against them. And then basically what, what he's saying is when things got really difficult... Uh, Josh became a bit more frustrating to watch and it's and uh, you know they thought he was being lazy but it could just be his style of play like he's very relaxed relaxed sort of player basically he said teams worked out how to play us pressed us hard and McEachern in the midfield wasn't the type of player who was able to deliver when asked to work hard track back and avoid the press um, so in, a, in our sort of attacking style of play he might be okay but it's when like we're, we're, we're gonna go down um, when we need to really be gritty. Is he going to be the right sort of player then? I'm not sure. And um, we've probably got a few other players like that uh, who are similar. Obviously, we, we were we were so solid in that sense last season. Uh, but now, when you're trying to go for more attacking players and players with the flair, like you do sometimes lack that. So he's saying, on the plus side, he's really skillful. In his early days, we saw him ping delightful passes to his teammates. When we played beautiful football, he was right in there. But the problem was, when the going got tough, or you needed a player to have a defensive mindset, that just isn't his game. He was basically saying he's very technical. That's why he thinks he was good in Holland. But obviously, the game is different over here. It's a lot faster. You've got to work a lot harder. And that's why he might have he might have struggled a little bit. From what Billy's saying, it seems like he's going to be quite good uh, offensively when we're attacking, when we're playing that lovely style of play that we really want to get across. But it's it's, it's the defensive side of it um, that he might be lacking in, which which does go against the stats from Blue's breakdown, but but Billy's been watching him for four seasons. So the thing that Billy said as well was like, Brentford aren't going to say he's a good player. Um, they're just not, because what they've seen of him isn't enough and he just didn't uh, meet the expectations of the fans and probably the management there. They stuck with him for four years. He went on a free. No one, no one really wanted to get him. Um, but he also said that, you know, when Hotter came to Blue's, they were all like, he's an amazing player. Is King Hutter, like you, there's there's no one else, and he didn't really fit into our squad. So he's saying, you know, if if we've got the right defensive cover, if we can allow him to be offensive and play the style of play that he wants to play, um, he could be good for us. That he he just wants to get his sort of thoughts across in that sense. So that's so that's basically what Billy had to say. He gave me a really in depth analysis, and I do appreciate that. So make sure you go and check him out. The links are down in the uh, top comment if you want to see Billy the Bee stuff. He does a lot of Brentford stuff, so go and check him out. So now I'm thinking, where is he going to fit in this blue side? Like, I still don't know the right formation for us to play. I think, firstly, Duke, just on his own, I think he needs someone with him. I don't know if Jimenez is going to be the man. I don't know if Marapti might be, but I think we need someone who's a natural striker. But he's like Chadams, or even Isaac Vassell, like someone that he can hold the ball up to and play it. Like, on his own, I just don't know if it's working. But then you're looking at the midfield... We usually have Bellingham or Vialba and then Crowley, and then or maybe even Magoma now. Um, and then we seem to have Sunic and Davis or Gardner, usually Davis. So is he going to take like if we're going to throw him in the first team? Would would you take Davis out? Which which again you lose a bit of that defensive ability, um, or it could it depend on the match? Obviously it would depend on the match, but if we do take him out, swap him for for Davis, are we going to notice? Um, that we're getting caught out at the back more because of it. I'm not sure. Um, we're not going to know until he plays. I just think, is Sunic going to be enough to cover him? Is he going? I don't know how hard he's going to work. I don't know. I, I just I find it really difficult to say. But it's going to be an interesting one. And I think he's going to be um, worth the risk. He's a free agent. He's probably on good money. Knowing Blues, I have no idea how much how much he's earning a week. But he's probably going to be on a fair amount. But I think we need to have patience in him and we might get frustrated with him when the going gets tough. I think that's the take-home message. But he's a player that can ping a ball, he can make a really good pass and he could contribute a lot to our overall style of play. So, fingers crossed it works. 
But yeah, like I say, sometimes you've got to take a risk on these players. And I, for one, am excited to see him. But yeah, just 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 keep that in mind, what, what Billy was saying as well. But that's all. I just wanted to give my thoughts, Billy's thoughts as well, uh, about this new signing. I'm fairly excited for it. I want to know what you guys are thinking. Like, are you excited for him? Are you thinking... He's going to slot straight into the squad. Where would you play him? And also, let me know, what would your lineup be? If you were the Blues manager um, and you're going into the Derby game tomorrow, what is your formation going to be? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell. And I'll catch you in the next one. Keep right on.